I hope everyone had uh, lunch to the full. And that is going to be my problem <laughs> because I'll have to wake, keep you awake. So um, just to start the presentation, I will not have a typical company presentation. Rather, what I would do is, um, can everyone raise a hand who knows about motor as a topic? Wow, good. And um, apart from motor, who was following the topic of magnets as a topic? Quite a few. That's nice. So it, it is going to be a good session. So I'll try to wrap up my presentation in 10 to 12 minutes maximum. And then we can have the question and answer or we can have the discussion. You can use this, right? Yeah, to start with, this is just the, so I'll just run you through the uh, thing which we'll be going across. So we'll be having some objectives, types of motors, some basic philosophy of motor designing, and what are the next level of things that we can look at? Uh, because not only Midwest, but there are other companies also who are looking into innovation into motors. Is Magnet going to be an integral part of EV drives? Yes or no? That can also be answered. I won't give a conclusive answer, but rather I would say um, we can derive the conclusion out of it. And we'll also be considering how in ways can we increase the efficiency of the drives. Because yes, the energy does come from battery packs, but we also have to consider one more thing. How are we going to deliver it out on the wheels? And motor is kind of a conversion unit, which converts electrical into mechanical. When you convert, it has a loss. Also, so the, some products that we are making as Midwest and how we can take it further. So Midwest as such is a mining company. Uh, we started in 1980. So it's a 43-year-old organization and uh, we, have been, we have been doing fairly well. So being in mining industry, we are very well known to dig out the good parts from various, uh, uh, various parts of the earth. So just considering how, why from mining are we transitioning or transcending to a, um, an EV startup or an energy startup. So it's basically because uh, we understood that there is a requirement or there is a despondency in the market which, with regards to the EV drives, the energy storage, the renewable energy. So considering all of this, we had in mind that w how can we help the industry to resolve some of the aspects. and. Um, as being a part of the startup, if you have a solution for anything, you definitely have a business case. So it works both ways. Yeah, so this is just basically to everyone's knowledge. Now, most of them know it, how many types of motors are being used. So we are going to consider some specific motors which are definitely used in EV drives rather than uh, considering all of the industrial applications and other stuffs. So some basic motor design philosophies which Midwest follows and many of the innovators also follow, which considers of materials, electromagnetic, electrical, thermal, structural, and mechanical. And we also work on this basic formula, which is BIL, which forms the core basis of how you can design your motor in a very efficient manner. So first thing, now this is a topic which we all have to consider, specifically the ones who are into two-wheeler segment. Uh, can I just know how many of y'all are into two-wheelers and three-wheelers? Okay, good amount. So why two and three-wheelers is uh, such a hype in Indian market? We have to consider one thing. India produces close to 10 million two-wheelers or maybe more than that as well. So you can just consider how big of a potential we have to get into the market. EVs are nothing in front of it. But if we are able to achieve the form factor of a motor which can fit across in a two-wheeler, which can give you the right amount of power output, then yes, you can have a very efficient system, lightweight, efficient system, which can be helpful. And the most important part is it is, it, 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 it is not only dependent on only one factor that you just shrink down the size and you can get things done. No. Two-wheeler is the most difficult application of all because it is susceptible to not only uh, getting into accidents from front and back or sideways, but it can even fall by its own self. 
So every kind of force is applicable. So how does your motor sustain? The motors are abused to the next extreme level. But you don't have, you have a limitation in the price as well. Then how will you, can you put more in the cooling system of the motor? No. But you have to keep the form factor small. Can you ask the battery manufacturer to make the battery packs smaller? Currently in this situation? No. There are limitations. So all that comes on the motor manufacturers. Now, if you see this small picture which I have placed here, so it's basically to give an, an idea how we can make the motors more and more efficient and reduce the size as well. How we can do this is by playing around with the materials or the magnets. Now, Midwest is getting into a vertical where we'll be the first of all in the Indian market who will be producing our own magnets. Now, those magnets are not something like we'll be getting from a neighboring countries or something, no. But right from the mining to making the neodymium metal and doping it with other rare earth elements, we'll be producing our own magnets. So doing this, we can increase the efficiency and the power density of the motor. Sorry, yeah. The most fundamental and most important aspect of any motor is torque. Now, many of us might know what torque is. What I have come across is most of the time, people think that uh, power is the most important factor. No. But if you see this simple formula which is given here, power is a derived quantity of torque. Torque is what gets basically produced on your motor shaft. So if you can play around with the torque, you can make a fantastic vehicle. I believe uh, most of you all drive cars and bikes, right? How many of you all actually drive an EV vehicle? Maybe a Nexon or my boss does drive. <laughs> yeah, so how many do drive an EV vehicle or how many have driven an EV vehicle? Was there a difference when you drive an EV vehicle versus an ICE vehicle? The initial thrust of an EV is always exhilarating or it brings an excitement in you. Why? Because of the torque. If you tune it properly, the torque can take you much more ahead. So to take it further, what we did in, as an experiment, and it, made, and it came out successful as well, what we did is we, took, we designed a motor, a 32 kilowatt motor, made it slightly higher on the torque, but we also combined it with a manual transmission. Yes, now this is a... Uh, part of debate wherein it would be said that a manual transmission will have energy losses. Correct. But here what happens? I get leverage of playing around with the torque. I can change or I can vary the torque in real time without even causing any change to the motor. Cause of which I can play with, I can make the motor work around its 50% of its duty cycle. In simple terms, what happens is now my efficiency curve of my motor is close to 90%. So do I consume more energy? No. But yes, am I carrying more weight? Absolutely yes. Can you reduce that to a certain extent? Possible. And the overall driving dynamics also vary a lot. Uh, you can see that a life piece we have kept, it's not working, but you can actually see a motor integrated with a manual transmission in our stall. Um, it's A3A, I suppose. I, 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 I forgot it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So coming to the next most important aspect of any system, whether it is battery pack or anything, it is thermal stability. Now, many of the times, what we forget is thermal stability is only considered for cooling. But it's not only cooling which we, have, which we have to consider. India is such a diverse country that you can find a region with 50 degrees Celsius, which is Rajasthan, and you just travel around 800 kilometers, go on the north, you'll have sub-zero temperatures. The terrains change, the driving conditions change, the requirements change completely. So how do you do it? So there is a way where you can play around with the thermal system. Now these are some of the things which people are already doing, like regenerative cooling, active cooling, using composite materials, carbon fiber, and other such stuff. But how much of them are actually used in the EV vehicles? Hardly few. We are only dependent currently on air cooling, 
and liquid cooling. Liquid cooling is also only on the jacket. So if you see this image, this is a liquid cooled system. But if you can see this red spot over here, this is still hot. And this is actually a stator. If this is still hot, means you are actually going to lose your efficiency. So how can we cover it up? This can be covered by designing a cooling system which actually runs along or runs through your stator coil. Now considering the same thing, how we can do that. Now if you see these red spots, now this is your stator. This is going to be your stator and the red spots, now that is your rotor with the magnets in between. Now if you see those red spots, in simple, uh, in motor designing terms, it is known as hysteresis losses. That is, the, every material has its own limitations till which you can stretch it. You go closer to that stretch limit, it starts generating heat. The moment you generate heat, it is loss of efficiency. Why do induction motors don't work more than 83% of efficiency? Because of this. Why do PMSM motors operate at 90 to 92% of their efficiency? Because the magnets have a natural flux in them or they have a magnetic field naturally being produced in them. So they don't have to struggle around to produce an excessive magnetic field. That is why PMSM motors can be smaller, compact and can be more efficient. And yes, you can do much more on the cooling systems as well. Where currently we are working is uh, basically we are working on the binding materials, thermal management and specialized cooling along with phase change materials for our motors. We have not started working yet on thermoplastics because currently thermoplastics are kind of difficult to uh, get into mass production. So coming to the second most important aspect is the motor winding. Whether you use an induction motor or a PMSM motor, every motor has this one limitation which is the slot fill factor. How much copper can you integrate in your motor? How much copper? So there are various different types of techniques which people are using. Now instead of using a rounded wire, people have started using a square wire, a trapezoidal wire, a hexagon based wire. We tried it with a hexagon wire and the inspiration was taken from the honeycomb of bees. So wherein because of the hexagonal shape, we were able to fit in maximum number of uh, wire. So the slot fill factor increased by around 20% as compared to the previous one. But in this, why were we not able to take it further and do some more pilots and all? As a pilot phase, yes, possible. But basically what happens is, when you see a hexagon wire, most of the wires everyone here might have seen might be a flat rod like a bus bar or a round shape, right? When you say hexagon, hexagon is a very different shape. So the wire manufacturer has to produce that kind of wire. Do any of the Indian suppliers supply a hexagon wire? Currently, no. So yes, but there are ways where we can do it. We even did a die casting uh, for induction motor and the results were quite good. The efficiency increased from 83% or 80%, it went around 88% because of die casting. But when you say you want to die cast a copper into a rotor, it is very difficult. Because first of all, uh, copper has a very high melting point. And if you want to do it around a stator, which is made up of aluminum, or if you want to do it around uh, a stator, which is made up of iron, they come very close to each other and the iron starts developing a different property altogether. So yes, it is possible. I can even show you some samples. I don't have it right now. But if anyone wants, I can mail you the sample pictures as well. It does work well for induction motors. Uh, but it has its limitation. So that is why we again resorted to uh, using magnets in our rotors. Oh, shit. Yeah. And there are other parts as well where we can use flat bars and all in the stator, in the stator itself. So this is good for your radial flux motors. And this you can do it for your um, axial flux motors. The hot topic, magnets. So is there a way to change the magnet configuration? Is there a way to increase the flux in a limited space? 
possible. 101% possible. You, can, you need not be dependent only on a typical grade of magnets. So you all might have heard, heard of uh, magnet grades like N38 or N42 and all. But you can even have a higher grade in the same form factor by doping them with other heavy rare earth elements. Now rare earths as such, it's, it's a hot topic itself. But we have to understand one thing very clearly. Rare earths are not rare at all. The process of extraction is what makes them rare. It is a very tedious and time-consuming process. But if you know the process well, you can actually shorten the process. Now currently we have a huge de dependency and there is a kind of a despondency in the air that what if the single supplying country does not supply us? So that despondency actually does not have a basis because we can produce the magnets in India. In fact, in the next three months, by March, ma'am by March, right? By March, we will be having magnets being produced in India by us. And those magnets can be as per your shape, size, dimensions, as per the magnetic flux density, and other requirements, the way you want the magnetic flux to be. So you want a bar shape, you want a round shape, you want the magnetic flux to run through, or uh, from the north po uh, from the higher poles, all of it can be designed in house. So it's easy. You can actually do it in India. Now coming to the controller, another one hot topic wherein uh, can I know how many people, uh, how many of you all actually work on controllers or any kind of some similar systems? Uh, good number. So controllers, as you all might be knowing, there is uh, there is always a factor where most of us prefer silicon-based uh, components, right? But can we shift it to silicon carbide-based? So as I see as such, if you work on it closely, it does work very efficiently, and it also helps in uh, reducing the losses due to heat. The moment you cut down the heat, trust me on the controller, you can actually increase the efficiency. And because of the material itself helps you in work in different directions altogether, you can actually program your existing controller into a way wherein you can in not only increase the efficiency of the motor, but the output of the motor without compromising on the safety. So be keeping your motor or pushing your motor, so suppose your motor produces 90% of efficiency, you can shift it to 92% or 93% just by using your, um, yeah, it's 15 minutes, I know. Yeah, so these are few of the products that we are making in-house, right from BMS high voltage to IoT and PDO and other systems. We also make our own battery packs along with our motors. And this is how we have conceptualized our overall thinking. So right from magnets to the motors, we can give everything to the user Right from the battery packs or the cell, we can give the battery packs and you can integrate it in your vehicle. It can be any kind of vehicle. And right from BMS, the embedded systems can be tweaked, customized as per your requirement. Yeah, so this is a quote which I definitely like because he says that if you make a good motor, you can actually make a better system. But rather I would add, if you can make a good holistic system, you can definitely make a greater vehicle. Thank you.